Hello, my name is Simon Danks and I have the privilege of being Chairperson of the Board of Trustees for Tools with a Mission. I'd like to start by thanking you for taking the time to watch this video. Whether you are a supporter, a volunteer in one of our refurbishment centres, a van driver, a tool collector, or whether you've just stumbled across our website, I hope that you'll find the next 20 minutes or so of interest and of encouragement. The history of TWAM is a remarkable story of people choosing to do the seemingly impossible. The world was a very different place in 1978 when Jack Norwood made his first egg incubator, this being the activity that's acknowledged as being the first in a series of events that led to the formation of the charity. Those early days were rooted in the Baptist Missionary Society and the Baptist Men's Movement before TWAM became independent in the mid-1980s. In the past, tools have been sent to most continents across the world. There are stories of miraculous provision of very specific types of tools that had been requested, and other stories of the miraculous provision of very specific numbers of tools. Some would say coincidence, but the more I pray, the more coincidences I see. Then in 2004, the move to Bailey Close, which allowed the charity to consolidate and to grow significantly again. But what about 2006, the sacrificial giving made by so many supporters so that the charity could purchase the premises outright. And through all this time, a steadily growing flow of tools and equipment and love leaving the UK in order to help those that desperately need it. So here we are in 2020. We still declare that we exist to demonstrate the love of Jesus Christ to those in our world that need it more than we do. And we are so pleased that so many of you whether you call yourselves Christians, whether you are of another faith or of no faith at all. We appreciate the fact that you support the work and choose to give your time and money in order to give those that need it a helping hand. This video is specifically about our current strategic plan that was written through 2019. There's a verse in the Bible that says, write down this vision and clearly inscribe it on tablets so that a herald may run with it. It's important that plans for the future are clear so they can be communicated well and so that everyone can see the part they take in executing those plans. But it's important for other reasons as well. We have to remember that TWAM is working in a global context. The charity sector today has a code of conduct, a set of principles, a way of working, that has radically changed even in the last five years. Some of the organisations that we send tools to in Africa are more capable, they're more organised and they're more effective than many charities in the UK. Mike Griffin and I were in Uganda in January of this year and we were admonished by one project leader that we met who was shocked that he received tools two years ago and this was our first effort to find out what benefit those tools had been within that project. Organisations that are working professionally in our target countries are as interested in our plans as we are in theirs. They're as interested in our long-term future and ability to support them as we are in the future of each individual that receives a toolkit. Shortly, Mike will uh, describe our ambition, and this will only be met by a significant increase in funding. Funding organisations are also interested in plans. In fact, one charitable trust that gave us £30,000 last year has increased it to almost £40,000 this year, purely because we have a plan that we can show them. So I'm grateful to my fellow board members that gave a significant amount of extra time over and above their normal board responsibilities in order to pray, debate and find consensus so that we might have a coherent vision for the next five years. I'd also like to extend that recognition to Mike Griffin. 
who really capably set out some of the issues that we had to face and facilitated a lot of our discussion. Some of the challenges of the circumstances we've all found ourselves in this year have meant that we have delayed sharing this with you for longer than we would have liked. So I thank you for being patient with us. At the end of the video, Mike invites you to be in touch with us if you have any questions, and I would also like to extend that invitation. Please feel free to use this video to help others understand uh, what TWAM is doing to develop. If you believe in the power of prayer, then please pray for this plan. The relevant parts of the plan will always be included in the TWAM prayer diaries circulated with TWAM news. So thank you for being with us. Thank you for being part of the journey that TWAM is on. And now I'll hand you over to Mike. I want to give you just a brief overview of our strategic plan and basically what we want to do and why we want to do it and take you through the key steps we need to take to achieve our ambition, which is to see TRAM double in size in the next five years. Now, the first thing we had to recognize was that within our current structure, this would not be possible. And that this level of growth was gonna take some very tough decisions and a complete review of our work in the UK. So why do we want to double in size? Well, simply it is to meet the need. But it'll be helpful, I think, to start by looking at our structure as it was at the beginning of 2020. Although that's nearly a year away now. First of all, we have the Ipswich Refurbishment Centre, Distribution Centre and Head Office. Open five days a week, eight till five, with about 60 volunteers and two paid staff. That in turn supported by Coventry, which was open um, three days a week, part days a week. Kenilworth, again, three part days a week. Penarth in South Wales, open two part days a week. Cowden Beath in Scotland, open two part days a week. And last but by no means least, Halstead open one part day a week. And they were supported by a van fleet, one van in Ipswich, one in Coventry, and two down south where we have loads of collectors, one in Maidstone and one in Farnham. Then we have three local collector groups, some very enthusiastic groups of collectors who also do some sorting and refurbishment in Chesterfield, Chichester, Sutton Coalfield, and I've run out of shapes to put on the map um, at this point. And they, in turn, supported by a huge group of independent workshops. We have Tool Aid down in Ringwood, Medway Volunteer Group in Chatham, Tools for Africa in Sheffield, Men in Sheds in the Wirral, Tendering Tool Refurb and South End Tool Workshop in Essex. And they were a massive support to, to us in refurbishing and indeed putting kits together. And the plan we're looking at today is going to focus on our own centres and the UK structure rather than, you know, these lovely independent centres that work with us. And to understand our current position, we have to look at, yes, the national distribution. I'm referring to here in Ipswich. Open, as we said, five days a week, but producing about 80% of all of our toolkits supported by three vans and dispatching 18 containers to Africa each year. And in fact, you can see on the left, there's a container sitting out there now, ready to, to go off to Africa. Now, with the best will in the world, the other centers can't match this. None have the space to put together the whole range of kits. None have the space to have a container outside to load, to send to Africa. None have paid staff to keep a centre open five days a week. It's not through lack of commitment or dedication or hard work. It's just not possible. And therefore, our first conclusion is if we can only 
we can only double in size by opening another center at least as big as Ipswich. That was a review of our work in the UK. But what about Africa at the beginning of 2020? Well, we're working in DR Congo, in Uganda, in Zambia, and in Zimbabwe. And if we look at that, we can see we're sending four containers, or we hope to send four, 24 equivalents to DR Congo, four to Uganda, eight to Zambia, and two to Zimbabwe. But as we look to grow, what about the other countries around there? Burundi, Angola, Namibia, Malawi, Botswana. We'd love to work in them too. But we can't even consider it now when we have up to a two year waiting list for some of these countries. And with COVID 19 and the shutdown growing to three years. Now, each of these countries has a partner that receives our containers. Um, Uganda and Zambia have well organized. Uh, groups of volunteers, all are supported by a volunteer country coordinator in the UK processing applications as they go out and promote our work in the country. Applications are mainly um, online through our website. That sounds easy enough, but in many countries where virtually nobody has access to the internet themselves, that may mean a day's travel to the nearest town to pay for access at an internet cafe, then going back again to see if we've answered, um, and then going back again to see if they've got an offer. And it takes time, and it takes money, and it's long, and it's a quite expensive process for them. Then their payment towards the cost of shipping can be made very easily and very cheaply through a local bank account we hold with our in-country uh, partners. But we want to extend that to lots of other countries. So our second conclusion is we need to increase capacity to reduce waiting lists to a maximum of one year. We need to make the application process easier and cheaper, like we've managed to make the payment process cheaper. And we need to be ready to begin to expand into other countries. So during the next five years, we need to double in size to reduce waiting lists and to meet the current huge demand. But then we have other issues, don't we? We have the reduction in tool quality. I think we all see that. We had a supply of older tools starting to dry up. Manual sewing machines is a classic, but they're important and they're needed. And as we have reached the conclusion that we are going to focus entirely on tools, stopping books, stopping educational tools for schools, stopping supplying bigger skill centers and schools with lots and lots of computers because we just can't do it and we're going to rely on tools then actually we're going to need lots more tools and this becomes a bigger and a bigger problem so our third conclusion is we need to focus on livelihood creating tools and ensure their quality does not diminish or their supply runs out we're not going to send tools to africa that aren't up for the job And that's why over the next three, five years, we've reached this conclusion. We need to double in size. I can only do so by opening another center at least as big as Ipswich. We need to increase capacity to reduce waiting lists to a maximum of one year. We need to make applications easier and cheaper. We need to increase capacity so we can serve more countries. And we need to focus on livelihood creating tools and ensure their quality does not diminish or their supply run out. So during the next five years, we need to double in size to do all of these things, particularly reduce waiting lists and meet the current huge demands. 
So what are we going to do? Well, let's just take a moment to look at each year. Year one for UK operations, freeing up the income to open a second major distribution and refurbishment centre by the closure of independence of the centres in Cowdenbeath, Penarth and Kenilworth. Beginning to develop partnerships with other UK charities able to supply the products we can no longer supply, such as books and school computer labs. In overseas operations, development of in-country teams, including appointment of country leaders, very strategic positions to take our work forward. Commissioning a time application act for mobile phones to make applications easier and cheaper. Commissioning development resources to help create well-managed and planned long-term sustainable projects. And just one example, we'll put it on the website, is this beautiful poster advertising community savings schemes, which allow groups to, to answer those questions about how do we afford to give everyone who leaves uh, our centre a carpentry kit or a sewing machine? How do we work with groups so they, they make income ready for when they, they leave us? It answers all those questions of long-term sustainable projects that have huge impact year after year after year. And we're getting lots of resources to help with things like this. And identifying tool manufacturers worldwide who can supply the tools that we are not going to be able to rely on being donated any longer. And we're already doing that. And in the last few months, we have placed lots of orders with, with companies across Asia to supply us with saws and, and sewing needles from the machines and pins and all sorts of things um, to start to build up those relationships and those supplies to guarantee us those long-term quality tools. But just to look at one or two of those things, by far the most painful decision that has been made was over the closure or independence of Cowden, Beath, Penarth and Kenilworth because it affects so many people, so many people who are committed and passionate volunteers at TWAM. So why have we done that? Because we're not a big charity and to open a second very large distribution and refurbishment centre and staff it is beyond our financial ability. The only way we can afford to do it is to reduce our overheads and close smaller regional centres. The simple fact is, along with the current Coventry, that will close, be replaced by this new centre, is that the running costs of all of them put together, producing about 20% of our, our tools, is about the same as it will cost us to open a new centre that will produce 80% of tools. And we simply, with the best one in the world, cannot work with 20% for the same cost that we could be working with 80%. It's not fair on the people we are actually out here to serve, the people of Africa. But it was still an incredibly hard decision because it involves loyal and dedicated volunteers. And it has caused pain and it has caused distress. And I'm desperately sorry for that. But we had to do it. Now, Cowden B, for many reasons, had to close. However, we're hoping that whilst Penarth will close in January, Kenilworth has simply not reopened after a long shutdown due to COVID 19 that both Penarth and Kenilworth will head towards independence and we're looking to work with them to achieve that. And we hope they will be able to stay with us. But it's, I'm sure it will be the hardest and most painful decision I've ever had to make to have these three centres um, close. Now, thankfully, this hasn't just been a year of negativity, which those three things are, it's been a very positive year when we have had the mobile phone app um, commissioned and we are looking forward to seeing that very soon. Um, where we have seen that the, the country teams growing into unified 
strategic teams taking our work forward, preparing to process applications in country, starting to look at the hardware and all the, all the equipment that they need to do that um, for us, preparing tablets for them, providing those. A huge level of integration with the work we're doing in the UK. These are big things we're going forward. All the new resources, these are very positive steps for all of us. And I'm thrilled despite it being an absolutely horrible year for all of us, we're not only up with what we were said we were going to do, we're actually ahead of schedule. And that is quite an achievement for, for all of us. Year two, what are we looking to do? Well, we're preparing for the new distribution and refurbishment centre to open in Coventry with a major volunteer recruitment drive to get it open, the current site open five days a week. Beginning a major two year volunteer tool collector recruitment drive from the Midlands up to Newcastle to get the people in place who need to provide a massive increase in tools if we're going to keep this new centre busy. Recruit a volunteer driving team um, to man um, the, a northern van because at the moment we can't expect Coventry to keep driving all the way up to Newcastle, their van. We need to put one halfway so we can do. So they go up to Newcastle one day and then take them down, the tools down to Coventry the next. We need to recruit that. We need to appoint a manager, a paid manager in Coventry to support five day opening. We can't expect volunteers to run a centre five days a week. Overseas, yes, the Uganda and Zambia in country teams begin to process the applications, having had training, having had their, their equipment. We want the new application mobile phone app launched. We want a feasibility study done on the opening of, this in, of an international training and distribution centre in Zambia completed in preparation for what we want to do, to do there. It's a huge amount of work we're looking to do. And in terms of that training centre in Zambia, that's very, very ambitious for us but it's a very important center as well and we'll look at that again in uh, a moment because what we want it to do well we want it to offer training courses to people from all the countries we support um, in tool machine maintenance and repair to increase the life of tools and therefore their long-term impact to train trainers who will go back home and train others how to look after sewing machines. We go out to Africa and we hear time and time again, my sewing machine doesn't work, it broke after a year. No, it's not broken. You just don't know how to maintain it and clean it. Well, that's not their fault, but we need to then train them how to clean a machine, how to look after it. The same with power tools, the same with most of the tools because that will give them a longevity and would increase their life by many years, which increases the impact of our tools, increases lives transformed. This would be an incredible support for TWAN. Train project leaders in business skills so they can plan large term sustainable projects, utilizing all the things we've provided, community savings schemes, the benefits of self-help groups, all that they can do beyond just training people using the resources, you can go and have a look at them. Apply to twam.com. They're all on there. You're welcome to go and, and have a look. Again, how to plan a project that won't be open for two or three years, but year on year on year. And the center that will receive tools that we purchased from, from Asia. So they're not sending them to the UK, just to ship them all the way back to Africa. We can send incomplete toolkits out to Zambia where they will be made up with the missing tools that have come direct from, from Asia and then be shipped over the whole of Africa. Incredible growth in the life of Twan. Then in year three, yes, the new centre in Coventry opens with a full-time manager already in place with a full-time paid assistant um, joining him. And yes, why can't it look like this picture? We're ambitious, so why can't we look for something like this? A northern 
bands now operational and supporting the big team of collectors that we've now got. The Zambia Training Centre opened in Cadway. Zimbabwe country team are now appointed to build up to consistency with what we're already seeing in Zambia and Uganda. In year four, the new distribution of Urgent Centre is now fully operational and dispatching containers to Africa. It's going to take time to become fully operational, but by year four, it's there. The training centre in Zambia is also fully operational, receiving tools, training people year round. Zimbabwe team now start processing applications, so they're catching up now with what we're doing in Uganda and in Zambia. And year four, a year of consolidation, catch up on missed targets from previous years, appoint a DR Congo in country team. Plus, of course, preparing the next five year plan and the next huge growth of TWAN. And perhaps well, how are we going to reach all those new countries we looked at early on? Our measure of success 16 containers from Ipswich, 16 from Coventry. Now, you might have noted earlier I said we were sending 18. We may have to reduce because it's going to get harder to refurbish and sort as tool quality reduces. So we may have to take some pressure off, but we're doing that by adding containers that are being equivalently sent from, from Zambia. And the Zambia Centre training all year round of groups to maintain their tools and equipment and seeing then the impact of that increase as we do audits of how this is transforming the longevity of lots and lots of groups. And remembering that actually this is what it's about. It's about transforming lives. We don't want to double in size because we're ambitious and we want to be bigger. We don't want to do all of these things because we'll look good. It's because tools transform lives. You know, we see that every time you read Twan News, it's stories of a life and another life and another life and families and communities being transformed by our tools. And that's what we want to see. And I have no doubt this is God's heart for Twan. This is why he showed us this plan. This is why this help us helped us through this dreadful year. So not only be up to date with our plan, but to be actually running ahead of schedule. So I hope you're encouraged by what we've been able to share with you. If you've got any questions, please ask. Feel free to give us a ring. Email us, post at plan.uk. We will answer. I will answer um, your, your questions. We're going to put this presentation on our website. You'll be able to look at that, twan.uk hyphen hour or hour hyphen plan. Um, you'll be able to see it on there. You'll see the presentation. There'll be a download sheet which has all the bullet points of what I've shared with you on. So you can follow that through and pray that through if you would, you would like to. We'll put that beautiful poster onto the, the same web page so you can see it there. But be encouraged. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your volunteering, for your financial support, for your tools. It's transforming lives. Utterly and completely and for good. How incredible. So let's keep going and let's look forward to the next five years together. Thanks for listening and being part of Twang.